What's going on, guys, and welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. You know, I love technology. You got to think about it. Because of technology, I get to talk to you and you and you. And even that asshole Matt back there, he's waving. You can't see him, but he is. Actually, hell, he's got a camera pointed towards him. Hell, I guess you I can see him. I don't know. But anyway, we got cameras everywhere. You know, a good cameraman, Matt told me best. Matt said, you know the difference between a good cameraman? You don't get some of the angles, you get all the angles, and he does. So anyway, how about this 1967 Chevrolet Camaro? First year for the Camaro. First pony car for General Motors. You're like, Rob, that's a muscle car. No, 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 that's a pony car. Long nose, short tail, pony car. Textbook definition. You thought you Mustang boys had the only pony cars? No, the Chevrolet had them too. And they even dodge, but we're not going to get into that whole horse puckery. But I love technology. Just as I check my online banking and seeing a wire hit on a car, this is what I love about technology is it eliminates bullshit. Just think about it. I can get paid for a car 15 minutes through a bank wire. And it makes me long for the days, or well, not long for the days, where we had to do this the hard way on paper. Let's say you bought a car online. Well, how do you get the money to them? You had to mail them a check. And I hate checks. I hate checks. I hate checks with a passion. I hate writing checks. I hate receiving checks. That means I got to go to the bank. I got to deposit. I got to wait for it to hit. And, you know, it's always up in the air. And I hate that. I hate that. I'm so glad with technology, we've sped this process up through the power of the internets and wires and satellites and fiber optic cable, everything do, 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 links up, boom, money's in the bank. Love it, I can spend it instantly. Just like I bought this Camaro, because I always find something I like. It's so funny how money works. No matter how much I got, I can always manage to find a way to spend it. You know, talking about checks, and a lot of you guys will never have this problem, a lot of you flippers and all this stuff, and I highly recommend, if anybody does try any of this, to run like hell because it's one of the oldest tricks in the book and it ran rapid through ebay and all your online guys many 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 years ago but it's definitely a story worth telling and you can't judge a book by the cover i was actually going to tell the story on vin wiki but ed's a little religious and he would probably get a little pissy with me and and i'm not not bashing that either but you'll see i'll pull it all together for you so back when i was selling cars online you know, back in the eBay days and things like that, I would buy cars at the sale sometimes too. They were my personal cars that I would sell and mix in with all the dealership cars. I bought a Ford ZX2, and I had a ton of these things over the years. And I loved Ford ZX2s. Literally, these were these cars were made out of shoe leather. These things were tough as snuff and not half as dusty. I loved them because they would run forever, you know, they were appealing, attractive little car, great price point, which were perfect for, you know, online sales, first time cars, and damn near perfect candidates for buy here, pay here. And we'll get into that in another video. I had this one particular ZX2 I bought. And I'll never forget, I actually bought it from a car lot that was going under in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And I actually bought 10 cars in one night from this place. They were going through the sale, and I just kept my damn hand up. And I mean, keep in mind, these were like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars cars. So it wasn't that big of a deal to keep your hand up. But at the time, that was a lot of money for me. These cars are coming through, and I'm just like, I'll take it. And they hated me. And I mean, it got to the point where I just kind of wink at the auctioneer, and he knew. And I didn't even have to raise my hand anymore. Didn't have, didn't have a buyer's badge. I knew who the fuck I was. You know, I bought all these cars. Well, in this mix of cars was a black Ford ZX2. You know, the ZX2s, like I said, were sporty. It was like, it was an Escort. Not the good kind. It was a Ford Escort. And this one was a five-speed, but it had leather, power windows, door locks, and it had like little 17-inch wheels on it. And, I mean, it was loaded out. It had a CD changer in it. I know this is before iTunes, kids, so bear with me. But it had a CD changer in it. I mean, the car was loaded out. And a nice car, good miles. I don't remember exactly what it had on it. Cleans the pin, jet black. Title was there for it. I said, well, shit, we'll just throw this bad boy online. I stuck it on eBay, and sure enough, 
bids just start popping up on it. I mean, popular car, great fuel mileage, sporty, whatever. It was a five-speed. That's back when people actually wanted cars with manual transmissions in them. Next thing you know, guy wins the auction, and he's in South Georgia. You know, keep in mind, all I got is a screen name. I can't look up his Facebook profile. I can't, you know, find anything about him other than his feedback score, which was decent. And some stupid screen name. I don't remember what it was at this, at this time. Bible Thumper 2.0, whatever. Anyway, so I sent the guy a message. Said, hey, congratulations. Da-da-da-da. You got a nice car. We need to arrange for payment and pickup. Give me a call at this number. Blah, da, da, da. I had the same cell phone number for years. I don't have it anymore, but I still remember this day. 593-5454. I remember that number. Da, 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 da. Just, I could just type it instantly with my eyes closed. Sent that, my phone started ringing within five minutes. Guy calls me up, and the very first thing he said, and I warn you with people, you want to talk about reading people. When someone starts off a conversation with this line, hang up the phone. I'm a preacher of a Baptist church. Not a hey, not a how do you do, not a you. Hey, I'm the preacher of a Baptist church. Okay, I'm an online car salesman. How would you like to pay? So back then, you know, you got to think about it. We didn't have PayPal or PayPal was very, very infant at that point. You know, so people were buying cars with it. They were buying novelty items and weird things off eBay with it, but they weren't buying cars with it yet. Hey, let me send you a check. Well, this was the thing. When you think of checks, you think, well, I don't want to take a personal check because you can write me a bad one. And you got to think about it. It's going to take a week for this thing to clear. Time it bounces back and forth, whatever. He goes, I'm going to get you a certified check. And my check is good as gold. He said, because my beliefs don't allow me to do someone wrong. Red flag number two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, well, you send me that certified check from your banking institution you know, as soon as that hits and clears, you're more welcome to come pick up your car. He goes, well, you know, I'm a busy man doing the Lord's work. And he goes, I've got a guy that's coming up your way. Can he just go ahead and pick up the car? And I said, as long as the check's cleared, that's fine. He goes, yeah, it should be fine. Three, should be fine. Been down this road before. I'm building up. Just hang with me. He said, I'm going to overnight you a check. He said, my guy's going to be there in two days to pick up the car. Went ahead and gave him the address where he need to pick the car up at, yada, yada, yada. He said, just give the title to him. Good enough. He calls me up. He goes, Rob, I'm in a bit of a pickle. What's that? I overnighted your check, but I didn't make the cutoff. So I'm scared my driver's going to beat the check. And I said, bud, I don't feel comfortable turning the car loose until I've verified these funds. And he goes, I stress to you, I'm a Baptist preacher of blah, blah, blah years. And he started naming off all kinds of things. And I said, at the end of the day, that doesn't put money in my checking account, though. You got to understand that. He goes, I do. He said, I do. He said, I'm just asking. He said, he said, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. Know, I really need to get this car picked up. He goes, just have a little faith in me. I said, we'll see. Hopefully, the check will make it. Yeah, you know, we're talking. We talked for thirty minutes about this check that he didn't make it in time to make the overnight cutoff. And just keep in mind, it's just coming from South Georgia to South Carolina. It's not coming from California to South Carolina. Well, as luck would have it, I get the check the next day. I didn't say anything. I kept my mouth shut. Well, you know, being in this business and, you know, being a single guy back in the day, I dated a lot of banker girls. And let's just say if a man needs a check verified in this town, I can make it happen pretty damn quick. So I whip out the old Blackberry, take the little, had a little ball in the middle of you, scroll. I mean, literally. I don't care who you had a check written off of. I could verify it in minutes because of my network of fine banker gals. 
this check had never heard of the bank. Which there's a lot of small credit unions and small banks, especially back then. Now, you know, we got about 10 big ones. And then, you know, you got a few mom pops in there. But as a rule, you know, if you don't recognize the name on a check, you better get to verify it quick. So I sent actually a picture of the check to one of my friends. And she called back. She said, I've never heard of this bank. And the route number makes no sense on it whatsoever. Well, the route number on check tells you where, basically, it's like the phone number for that bank, basically verifying the name and, you know, the whole institution and all that stuff. So basically, that's kind of like the social for that bank. It verifies that that bank matches that routing number, just like your picture recognizes your driver's license number or just like, you know what I'm saying? It makes it it. It's his identification. And he goes, she goes, I can't get nothing pulled up from this. And this is a good looking check. I remember I had the little foil thing, the little hologram foil thing. It was a real check. I mean, I've toted some bad checks before too. And bad like is in a fake one and bad because they're f-ing rubber, but unfortunately. But this one was a real check. You could tell it was a real check. So I didn't say anything. I didn't call my preacher friend. I just let it lay. I sent it to another banking friend of mine. And she said, that check's fake as shit. I can just tell you right off the bat. You know, she started picking out things on it. So what do I do? Pick up the phone, call my buddy down at White Collar Crimes right here in Greenville, Greenville City. Run that check down here, Rob. We run it down there. Sure enough, it's faker and shit. And I actually got a little lesson that day. And this is something I'm going to pass on to you guys. When you see a certified check, and everybody thinks a certified check should be verified funds, which it is if it's a real certified check. That means the money's been removed from the account. It's held in this check and it's promised as good. It's a promissory note, which is basically any check, but this is verified by the bank. This isn't from your checking account. This is saying the bank has got the money. It's good. This is the problem. You can go to Staples, Home, or not Home Depot, Office Depot, wherever this sells office supplies, and you can buy these blank checks by the box. You don't need a permit or a license, anything. They'll sell them to you just like copy paper. And basically, they took an inkjet printer and made up blah, blah, blah bank, filled some numbers in where it looked right, and they sent me a fake certified check for this car. This preacher did. Naturally, while I'm sitting in this guy's office in White Collar Crimes, I call. He didn't answer. Go figure. Called again. And it goes straight to voicemail, like it's cut off. So I give them all the information that I have. And we have the envelope from the address where supposedly it was sent from. It's a dud. Literally, talk about dodging a bullet. Just because he slipped up and he thought he was slick, he thought he sent it after a cutoff, it actually made the cutoff. And I got the check a day early. So what happened? Well, sure enough, the next day, Some guy comes pulling up. I never get a Spanish dude pulling a three-car hauler, comes pulling up at my place, say, hey, I'm here to pick up a Ford Escort for blah, blah, blah. But the name wasn't the same. I said, give me just a minute. So I call, and they come, and the police have a little talk with this man. Then come to find out, he lets on who the guy was that hired him, and through the chain, we actually got him arrested. Well, this is the thing you got to understand, though. When you mail a check over state lines, Not only did you just give me a fraudulent check, that's wire fraud now. That's federal. So you're telling me a $3,000 escort, this man's going to the big boy jail for. And he got indicted for this. And he was a true Baptist preacher. He wasn't lying about that part. You know, you meet so many people in this line of work. And I mean, I've met some of the best people you can think of that are good as gold. And I've met some that literally would rob Peter and write Paul a bad f-ing check. And, and this is the one that, you know, it, it tickles me looking now. Now, every time, you know, I see a, hear somebody that, that's over religious and I'm not saying religion's great. You know, if that, that's your bag, that's that's your thing. But when someone feels like they need to announce it to everyone to make themselves like a state, like, like, you know, I'm a preacher, so I'm up here. Yeah, you better think twice. So, like I said, I don't think any of you guys will ever have this problem with checks. And that was the very first one I ever got. I actually got about 10 more 
from different places. But the one that always sticks out in my mind was the preacher. And hey, you got to have faith. Hopefully, he never dropped the soap. And I got faith that maybe he's out of jail now. That's been many, many years ago. All right, guys, I want to tell you something right quick. I told Matt the camera, got to keep that damn camera on. I don't ask for a whole lot from you guys. You know, and I love doing these videos. Well, if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, you're going to notice my subscriber count. We're getting dangerously close to that 100K. I don't ask for a whole lot. If you haven't jumped on board, you haven't subscribed, I don't like drilling that over the head because it drives me nuts when I hear it. Do your old buddy rabbit a favor. I want that damn play button. Something fierce. You know, this channel does everything the right way. I know it's funny, a used car salesman telling you that, and I just told you a story about a preacher that writes bad checks. But we do it the right way. We don't have bought subs, we have real subs. And I love you guys, each and every one of you, all 95,000. And like I said, we're getting there, and we're so close. Hit that damn like and subscribe button. Give me that damn play button. We'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. You look good, darling. You look good? Mm -hmm. You damn right, I feel good. How about that? Wire just hit. Even better. Another one sold. What's going on, guy? You know, keep in mind, all I got is a screen name. I don't know anything about the guy. I can't look up his... <laughs> and that's how you break your phone.